Hello, I'm Justin from Embedded Micro and welcome to our very first video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about what FPGAs are as well as how they differ from microcontrollers. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array and what this means is that you get to program the hardware of the device rather than writing software to run on a predefined processor. To make this more concrete, I'm going to give a quick example of something you can do with both a microcontroller and an FPGA. In this example, we're going to look at a project where we want to push a button and have an LED turn on, and when the button's not pressed, we want the LED to be off. So if we're going to implement this with a microcontroller, you first need your microcontroller, where you connect a switch and an LED to it. Now you're going to write some code, and this code is going to read the switch, check if it's pressed or not, and turn the LED on or off accordingly. Now what actually happens when you write this code and put it on the processor is that there's a CPU inside, which is the processor core, as well as some peripherals. And what happens is the CPU is going to ask this peripheral, hey, is the switch pressed? If it's pressed, then it's going to tell this one, okay, now turn the LED on or off. Um, and this is going to happen over and over again in the tight loop where the processor is going to spend all its time checking the, checking the switch, turning on the LED. Now, if you're going to do something like this with an FPGA, you simply don't have the processor or these peripherals built in. And instead, you're actually defining the hardware of the device. So for something as simple as this, you can simply wire the, L the switch to the LED. Now, this means that it's going to happen incredibly fast because there's no checking involved, no sending, like reading or writing the outputs. It just happens. The signal just propagates through the FPGA to the LED. Uh, but if you want to do something, you know, this is a very trivial example, maybe slightly something more complicated where uh, you want to do the opposite. So when you push the switch, you want the LED to turn uh, off, and when it's not pressed, you want it to turn on. Now that's actually very simple too, because you can just insert a NOT gate. Now if you're not familiar with Boolean logic gates, I recommend uh, checking out a tutorial on our website. I'll put a link in the description that covers the basics of these. But basically all this does is when it sees a 1, it outputs a 0, and when it sees a 0, it outputs a 1. So it just inverts the signal. So now when the switch is pressed, it tells the LED to turn off, and when it's not pressed, the LED turns on. Now, this is, you know, very trivial, but another example of something that's very powerful with this is that this circuit runs completely independent of anything else in the FPGA. So, just another quick example, if you want to do, say, the same thing over here again, where you have another LED, and another switch, but say you want this when you press the switch, you want the LED to turn on, so like before, um, you can simply connect this with the wire, and what this will happen then is these completely will run in parallel, independent of each other. So this is going to do the same thing as it did before, and this is going to do what our previous example did, but they're going to happen exactly at the same time, uh, and they're going to be just as fast as if you were only doing one. Now this isn't true if you were doing something with the processor. If you had a processor, like a microcontroller, it's actually going to have to share its time between the two of these. Half the time it's going to be doing checking, checking the switch and updating the LED on this side, and half the time it's going to be doing this side. Uh, and while in this example it's kind of trivial and it's like, who cares if the speed is different, uh, in many applications this is a huge advantage. While these examples have been fairly trivial, FPGAs are actually very powerful devices and they can implement practically any kind of digital circuit, including things like processors, so you could even design your own microcontroller. However, FPGAs are generally best at things that are complementary to microcontrollers. This is one of my favorite features of our board, development board, the Mojo. It actually has an Arduino-compatible microcontroller in here, as well as an FPGA. And what this allows you to do is create some interesting projects where the microcontroller is doing the complex control of the program, while the FPGA does a little heavy lifting. A great example of this like collaboration is a project I'm currently working on, this hexapod over here. The way this works is the microcontroller runs some code that figures out where the legs need to be, and the FPGA takes care of actually setting the 20 different PWM signals to all the servos. This would be impossible on a microcontroller because they generally only have three to six hardware PWM outputs, and emulating more in software would just take up all your CPU time. Uh, the FPGA is also responsible for taking images from the camera as well as storing them in some RAM and doing some processing on them. This also would be impossible to do on a microcontroller in real time. So go ahead and take a quick look at how this works. I 
I hope this tutorial gave you a good idea of what FPGAs are and what they're capable of. Make sure to check us out at embeddedmicro.com for lots of tutorials, including the basics on how to download and install the necessary tools. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.